Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to make another video on editing in the MLV app because I recently found a new process that gets really good results from the EOSM. I have included the receipt file in the description if you'd like to download that to easily apply to your own footage, but otherwise keep watching as I show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so to get started, uh, let's turn on, by default there's some things that you're going to do just by default with pretty much everything you record. So in this case, starting out with this file, um, which was just a handheld shot, I'm going to turn on the Chroma Smooth at 3 times 3 or 3 by 3 which is probably you should almost always do with any clip that you have. Um, but then as you might be able to tell from the aspect ratio and how this looks, this was shot with a 2 times anamorphic. I've got a Koa um, uh, 2 times anamorphic projection lens that I use. Um, so we'll stretch that by 2 to get what it actually looks like. So this is an aspect ratio of 2.76. It was recorded at 1600 by 1158, which gets uh, continuous recording. Um, at 14-bit lossless, so absolutely fantastic. This was shot at 200 ISO. It was pretty low, pretty, pretty dark uh, uh, environment, but it works. It was shot at f1.7 with a 50mm, a, a Yashka 50mm f1.7 DX um, as the taking lens. But anyway, with that aside, let's start with the grade. What I would normally do up until now is I would change the color gamut to the Alexa wide and then I would apply one of my favorite LUTs of all time which is one you get with DaVinci Resolve by default. It's their Kodak uh, 2383 D55 um, which then makes the footage look like this which is way too extreme. So what I would do is go up here and either use curves and or dark strength to affect it and and exposure and contrast dark strength exposure and contrast or curves or something like that to bring it back to something more normal the way it should look i suspect the lut is is expecting the footage to be log and that's why it does this because the footage isn't log um and, you know, if you play with it a bit more, it can look reasonably, it can look perfectly good. But uh, a few days ago, I started to think about different ways to process the footage that might make it look better. And so I stumbled across doing this. If we come back to this profile set up here, you can see that Reinhardt, which is pretty decent, it's perfectly fine, if we were to change this to Alexa Log C and then the Rec 709 back to the Alexa gamut, you can see that it's way blown out. Like it sets it way too high, the, the middle gray way too high. Um, but you have this gamma, which by default is at 3.15. What if we set that to 1? Now, without it boosting that 3.15 times, it looks more normal. This is what I would expect to see, based off of, because I was there, this is what I would expect to see if I were to have actually shot this on an Alexa. This is what I would have expected to see, because it was a really low light situation. So, then where do we do with this? With this low light log footage? Well, we can go ahead and apply that LUT again. And it, we see that it looks way darker. But what can we do about that? Well, what I found is if that we just come back up here and you, with dark strength, if we dock that back to about four, it looks a lot better. This brings it back enough that this looks actually really close to the way that it did, just with, like how it actually looked, except with the grade to it. What we can do is then use highlights and shadows to adjust it even further. With these lights here, they're very high and they're capping, so I'm going to use highlight reconstruction and bring the highlights down just a little bit. You can see that bit of detail come back in this one, which it's focused. And then we can play with shadows to bring back, push the shadows just enough to be more visible to where we'd like it to be instead of being this harsh contrast. 
we can bring them up a little bit. Now you might be thinking if you shoot with the USM that this must have introduced quite a lot of noise in the shadows, a lot of really grody noise. Well, if we hit F to zoom in and we go to like say right about here, you would expect this to be really like the red and blue dots and really noisy. Well, if we hit play and take a look at it, it's actually not that bad. This isn't very representational because it's not able to play at real time, but the noise is so inoffensive. It looks like a very small hint of just simple luminance noise, um, which I found that if we come down here to the grain setting and we up that to around 12, it kind of gives it an overall grain that hides the noise. Because that's the difference between noise and grain is that grain you see throughout the entire image, noise you only see in the shadows. And so by adding just a tad bit of grain, it masks that noise in the shadows. And so the image looks significantly better if we play it again. Um, and so I don't know why this works this way as far as the gamma. And I don't know why it's set to uh, 3.15 by default. But I found that this gives it a really good look. On top of that, say you want a normal look, you don't want this Kodak look, you can go into here, go back into here, which how I got to this is, if you know, you might know how to get to uh, the LUTs that DaVinci uses, but if you go into the DaVinci settings and you go, on, you tell it to show you your LUT folder, then all you have to do is copy and paste the um, the search into this here you copy it there come here open this paste it here and bam you have the same you have access to the same LUTs that DaVinci accesses so back onto track on track looking at the ARI we have these I downloaded these straight from the ARI website so let's take a look at applying like a basic LUT we see that it now looks way more normal just a little bit probably a bit more overexposed than what it actually was so we can like knock that down and this actually looks pretty representational of what it actually looked like if you were there that day at this restaurant this is probably about what it would have looked like um another form or another way to edit it is by turning off the creative adjustments which then allow or gets it to look like this and your only control is the exposure this is probably more represent representative of what it would look like if you had just recorded it and bam instead of having the creative if that's something that attracts you to get more of just like a what it would have looked like you can see that a it gets a little bit more contrasty and the saturation goes up a little bit um, you do still have control of your exposure so if you wanted to do that and your tint and temperature but that's like a more basic thing if you wanted to do it you could just click that off one put these on and then apply your LUT and have a basic look um, otherwise you can use that and get more of a final looking image here, let me do it to another file. So if we start off up here, set it to the three, come down here, set it to the two times for the anamorphic, you can see this sign, I take a step back and stuff. Um, come up here, let's set that to one right out of the gate. You can see it looks like this. Um, it is clipped, but you can see how that looks. Um, not that, Alexa, wide gamut. Then if we wanted to, we could turn off creative adjustments. This is what it would have looked like. I'm sure this is what it would have looked like if uh, I had been shooting through an Alexa. This is probably what the preview would have looked like that day. Um, with the creative, it makes it a bit more contrasty, but this is what a, I would expect a log file to look like without creative adjustments. So then we can go back down here to LUT and say we just apply this basic Rec. 709, like, uh, 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 airy to rec 709 lot we get like this very basic look like normal look to it without um, doing anything so what would the be the benefit of doing this versus just going with the Reinhardt and the rec 709 well because the Reinhardt and rec 709 see this reset and then apply the two 
versus this. So with some editing magic, I can put them side by side to see what you think of it. Um, we'll turn that on quick. You can see the difference. There's, it's not very strong, but it's, 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 it's noticeable. Um, and I, I'm starting to see more, uh, why people call the EOS M a budget airy. And it's because within reason, you're not really getting airy footage, but within reason, it is very airy-esque. And I love that about this camera because especially pairing it with a two times anamorphic, the look I can get from the footage is spectacular. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.